Hi, I'm Elisa Vitti. I'm the founder and director of the Flow Living Hormone Center. I am the best-selling author of Woman Code, and I'm the creator of the My Flow Period Tracking app. The Flow Living Hormone Center was really something that I needed, you know, a long time ago when I was dealing with my own hormonal health issues, and I really wish there was a place where I could have gone when my period started being becoming problematic, where I could you know, talk to someone about the issues that I was struggling with, where I could test my hormones at as much as I wanted, um, or I could get some effective and natural treatment, and I could track how all my progress was going and how my symptoms were doing. And so uh, the Flow Living Hormone Center is really the first and only global menstrual healthcare concierge platform where you can do all those things. You can talk to someone, treat, test, track, everything to do with your cycle and your hormones. A lot of the messaging that we're given as women about our reproductive health is lacking in um, enough science and enough practical wisdom that we feel like we should also avoid it. And then it ends up causing us to make choices in our own health care of doing nothing, which we know is really dangerous from great research that's long been out there. You know, the, the biocycle study, for example, determined that if you have untreated PMS in your 20s and 30s, right? And PMS is a serious hormonal imbalance where you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. If you let that go untreated, which, hello, everybody does, we just joke about it, that will increase your likelihood of developing the four big diseases of inflammation postmenopausally. So that's heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and dementia. And I don't think we should be joking about that. I think if you have a friend who's, got, who's complaining about PMS, you should be like, oh my goodness, you're on fire. You need to do something today so that you don't end up you know, without your noodle you know, at 60. Um, so I think it's really important for us to understand how our bodies work, um, to, to get really practical, useful information about what we can do to um, interact with our endocrine system to optimize its performance. Um, and to understand how to troubleshoot things along the way because it is not complicated, it is not mysterious, and, it's, and your body is so responsive to the right inputs, and it's just amazing. My experience of watching my body transform is not unique. I've been doing this now for nearly 17 years with tens of thousands of women around the globe. This is every woman's story, and I think it's just time that there's a place, you know, that you use, you go to your gynecologist for your annual and whatever other tests you wanna get done, but then when you really need to take action around your cycle, there needs to be a place. And so that's why I ended up opening up the center because I needed it and we all need it. We need this kind of a, a, a place where we can go when things are getting a little off track with our, with our hormones. And the whole thing with the pill is a big conversation, and I think women are starting to really ask more questions about this because, you know, here we are, we're eating clean, we're, you know, exercising in different ways that are really, you know, body aware, we're living these more health and wellness-based lifestyles, and then we're taking this medication to suppress something that is really you know, part of our biological process. It's start, and I think a lot of younger women are starting to say, well, you know, gee, if, if I'm not using it necessarily for, for birth control, why am I using it? You know, what is the benefit here? Especially when there's so many side effects. Because the truth of the matter is when you take synthetic hormones, you are not getting a period. You're suppressing ovulation altogether. That is what the pill does. It's a specific cocktail of estrogen and progesterone that simulates pregnancy so that you stop, you shut off the ovarian conversation altogether. And then you're not actually having a bleed, you're having something called a breakthrough bleed. So the days that you're taking, if you're taking the pill, you're taking like five days of a sugar pill. And because you're not dosing with that particular cocktail of estrogen and progesterone for those five days, you have a little breakthrough bleeding. And some women don't have that at all. So in fact, over time, the more you take medication, um, the period can just go away altogether. So that's important to know because women think, oh, no, I'll take the pill, I'll still have my period. But no, you're not having a period at all. You're not having the whole cyclical process happen between the pituitary gland and the ovary and the uterus. It's, it's all shut off. So that's first and foremost. Second thing to know is that while you're on that medication, whether it's delivered in the form of a ring or an implant or an IUD or the pill, 
that medication, because of the, the way they have to mo uh, modify and manipulate the molecular structure of these hormones in order for them to commercialize them, they are not a perfect lock and key fit on your cell receptor sites for those hormones. And as a result, you can have all sorts of reactions to it. I call this synthetic birth control syndrome. So you, f you get on any of these medications and how many of us have that experience where you're like, oh, something's wrong with me because I can't take the pill, right? It's, I, I've got to find one that works for me. Well, what that means is that you're just having sort of an allergic reaction to that synthetic m modified molecule, right, of that estrogen, of that progesterone. And that's just short term, immediate, while you start taking it, but long term, this synthetic hormone combination starts to diminish and deplete key micronutrient stores in the body that are essential for endocrine function, which is, this is the big problem and this is sort of the link to future fertility, right? So let's say you go on this medication because you have a diagnosed condition like polycystic ovarian syndrome, like fibroids, like endometriosis, like heavy, terrible cramping and bleeding. Once you have a diagnosis, that already means you are micronutrient deficient in these key uh, micronutrients, vitamins, minerals that your endocrine system needs to, pr to create proper hormonal balance and you're already deficient, you're already depleted. Then you take a medication on top of that that does two things. One, gives you a false sense of security, think, making you feel like you have no more symptoms to address. And two, actively daily further depletes your bank account of these micronutrients. So by the time you get off, which can be a decade or longer, you've now had a worsening of your, of your original situation and you haven't felt any of the symptoms to put you into a position where you'd be motivated to take action. And that's all that these symptoms are. These symptoms are not a life sentence of, oh, you're supposed to be suffering with your period forever. It's just, hey, this is re things are really not working in our favor. Our, we as an endocrine system cannot function optimally on your behalf. We cannot produce a healthy cycle for you. We, have, we, are, we need your help. And symptoms are the call from the body to you. We need you to do some things differently. But when you're taught we live in this culture that says, oh, I don't know, you just have some bad period luck and you know, the best thing to do is just medicate it and forget about it, then of course you do nothing and you don't feel those symptoms and then there's this worsening of um, that pre-existing condition. And so for that reason, it's really frustrating. You know, and I see this unfortunately all too often where women then at like 35, 37, they've been on the pill for 10 to 15 years or longer, 20, and they've had something going on that has been unaddressed. Then they go off and they want to get pregnant right away and now they have to recover major recovery time from all that depleted micronutrient stores and address the original hormonal imbalance and it takes time the longer you are on the pill the longer it takes to recover so you know this is one of the reasons why i created the balance by flow supplement line because I wanted, I mean, after 17 years of researching sort of what are these essential micronutrients that every woman needs for her endocrine system to function optimally, I just wanted to create a set of formulations that would do that for women. They're there for if you have a diagnosed condition or if you're taking the pill or if you really feel like you need it for preventing pregnancy or any of the devices, make sure that you're supplementing adequately so that you're not further de becoming depleted. Your bank account isn't going into the red right? You can at least end the day with a neutral balance. So your fertility is something that you don't want to take for granted. You know, we live in an environment that is sort of replete with endocrine disruptive chemicals that are really already compromising your body's ability to do the thing it's designed to do when, if you choose to reproduce. There are chemicals in the environment, chemicals in your food, chemicals in your home, chemicals in your makeup that are actively disrupting your body's ability to produce balanced levels of hormones that over time can erode your ability to have you know, regular ovulation and a healthy cycle. From the point of view of men, sperm production worldwide um, in the past 50 years has gone down by 50%. So these chemicals are not just affecting women, they're affecting men. And on the flip side, in terms of children, now there's a rise. There used to be just precocious puberty you would see in young females as early as nine, but now we're seeing that also spill over into the males as well. So precocious puberty is on the rise, which means Younger bodies are being exposed to these synthetic estrogens, chemicals in form of pesticide on lawn care and in the cleaning detergent at home, and of course pesticides and, and growth hormone in food. 
and it's stimulating the endocrine system you know, too quickly in a young person and they'll start developing at nine when that should be more like 12 or 13. Um, and then on the flip side, we'll see this really impact fertility. So I think this is a major, major issue that's only going to get worse as we continue to wreak havoc on our beautiful planet here. And I think that you have to take personal responsibility. You cannot wait for these things to kind of get addressed globally. You need to sort of uh, recognize that, you know, you're in charge of what kind of chemical exposure you can control for. So your home should be green, your cleaning products, your makeup, your food organic. Um, and if you have children, you need to really protect them even more, you know, consciously a little bit can go a long way in terms of exposure even the the choices of hand sanitizer you use you know the triclosan this antibacterial um, chemical that's been put in hand sanitizers and toothpaste and dishwashing soap it's a known endocrine disruptor um, in men and women and the FDA made such a statement but so it's not allowed to be in hand sanitizer anymore but it's still in a lot of toothpaste which you'd think you'd use toothpaste a little bit more than hand sanitizer. So just be educated. You know, the, everything's out on the internet. The um, Environmental Working Group is my favorite online resource to check any chemical that you may be looking at on a product to see how safe or unsafe it is. And it's just so important. You know, as, as important as putting the right inputs into the system is important for endocrine health and, and hormonal balance, making sure the wrong things stay out is an equally important job. And when it comes to fertility, you and your future child um, will thank you for the work that you put in today to preserve um, your reproductive function and protect your egg quality, your genetic material. This is a great thing about your body as a woman. You have early warning detection, right? Those little period problems that are cropping up in your teen years, acne and bloating and PMS, the red light is flashing on the indicator dashboard saying, hey, something's not working, taking action in your early 20s and getting your hormones set up because your body's gonna heal so much more rapidly anyway because of your youth is such a gift to give yourself. You know, instead of waiting till you're nearly 40 to start addressing your hormones, it's gonna be a longer process. The endocrine system is marvelous. You know, it's like, it's really, it's an extraordinary um, system that I just don't think we spend enough time learning about or getting um, intimate with and familiar with because it really runs the show. I mean, I always joke, people say, you know, oh, I'm free thinking. I'm like, well, you're as free thinking as your hormones are balanced because they're really running things. For example, if you don't eat enough at the right, um, frequency, spacing, right? Your blood sugar drops, and this is called hypoglycemia in terms of a response. And the endocrine system, its primary job is to safeguard the transport of glucose to the brain, the heart, and the muscle tissue. So it really doesn't like it when you screw around with, you know, how much you're eating and when you're spacing out meals. It really likes a consistent calorie intake and consistent timing of meals. So when this hypoglycemic episode happens, the whole endocrine system gets into action. Um, cortisol, um, insulin, you know, things will start moving. Even thyroid can be involved. And just to make sure that your body starts to get access to glucose if you're not putting it in through dietary means, right? Now, episodically, this is okay. But if this becomes a chronic issue, other things are going to start to take over. And so this idea that you think your their willpower is something that we have at our disposal is nonsense when you look at the science, right? What you have is, you have cortisol taking charge when there isn't enough gluco uh, glucose dietarily coming in. And so cortisol will talk to your fat cells and say, hey, mobilize some of that stored fat and get it out into the bloodstream as quick as you can. But over time, the body doesn't like that either. So then it starts to have some neurotransmitters come into play. It starts getting, sending out more ghrelin, right? And saying, okay, we're hungry, we're starving, we're craving you know, chips and whatever it is just to get you into a place where you can be eating more calories to bring that blood sugar up. You're not in control in those moments the way that you would like to think that you are. So your hormones are really uh, trying to guide you into right behavior so that you and your body can be healthy. So it's not like they're running things, but they're trying to help nudge you along in the right direction. If you wanna just be a person who is up to things in life, right, who's not feeling like you're behind the eight ball in terms of your energy, your mood, and other aspects of your health, and you wanna be proactive, productive, creative, inspired, doing things, you need to set the groundwork you know, physiologically for you to do that and biochemically to do that. And, and hormones play a huge role in that. So for me, balancing hormones 
you know, the short term payoff is, of course, you get to get rid of all those annoying symptoms that plague you chronically throughout the month and you get to feel better. But long term, what's really the opportunity is that you get to prime yourself for your best life, your best work, your best inspiration. You get to really set, use your body as a tool to master your life. And that's really what it's about. I went on Dr. Oz and uh, did a demonstration that I had been doing for years by using fruit juice to simulate the different colors of menstrual blood um, on little white dishes to show women how they can use their monthly bleed as a blood test, right? You can do this, you use it as a blood test, it's blood, it, the specific color of it can actually tell you very clearly the ratio between your estrogen and progesterone and you would want to know that because it would tell you why you're having PMS, why you're maybe not um, being successful with your fertility journey. You can watch that change, the color and texture of your bleed month over month. It's the best, easiest, most user-friendly self-assessment that you can do is really looking before you flush at what's going coming out of you from a menstrual point of view. So um, this is so important that we actually built a free tool. We just think every woman should have access to this. So it's the period type quiz. You can just go to the flowliving.com homepage and answer seven questions about the color of your period and the texture and the things that we need to know. And it will tell you what's wrong with your hormones which is so empowering because then you'll know what to do and it also tells you what to do, what foods to change and how to get you in action right away. Because what's really exciting is once you start to play with your food a little bit and then you see what's happening next cycle, you start to notice, oh, some of my symptoms are diminishing and look, I'm seeing changes in what I'm seeing in terms of color of the bleed. There are only is it four different things that it could be color wise, right? So you can have sort of what I call the brown type, the pink type, the red type, the blue type. Those four colors um, really determine whether or not you have not enough progesterone, too much estrogen, not enough estrogen, or you have that perfect balance between the two. And that's really valuable information that every woman should know every month because it's not static, right? You could have things happen over the course of a year holidays, stressful situations at work, family you know, stressors, changes in your diet, changes in your lifestyle, major episodes of traveling, all illnesses, all sorts of things um, because of the link between the immune system and the endocrine system um, can impact what shows up for you monthly and the best way for you to gauge how well your body is responding to all of these different you know, situations that arise that are external to your endocrine function and how it's impacting them, that's really where you can see it show up and it's such a useful tool because then you can start to troubleshoot. Because then a lot of women then ask me the question, well, how do you know what to do? Um, it's so easy, what, you know, that's what we developed the, the app for so that you can like learn why you're having a symptom and then learn which foods to eat to make it better and make it go away within a month or two. Uh, and that's the thing I, I just love like letting every woman know that if you make food changes that are appropriate for your particular um, set of hormonal in issues, you can bring them to resolution within three months, typically. You can have a really wonky period today and three periods from now have it be what it should be. And that's not a very long time. That's not a lot of commitment. Think about things you commit to for far longer and you don't get results. This is something that has major, major responsive um, action in the body and, and it's encouraging. The more you do, the more you see your body performing better, the more you're gonna take care of your hormones and that of course is a perfect biofeedback loop that we want to encourage. I think for me, I'm, all, I'm, I'm tracking things daily. I don't wait for a monthly kind of report um, exclusively with the color of my bleed, although that's like the that's like the final exam. You know, if you were to think about it, you want to take like daily quizzes, you want to look at how your body's performing daily, but the final exam, how you really, if you did it right that month, that will show up in the actual bleed um, phase. But for me, I'm looking at how is my energy, how is my mood, how's my digestion, how's everything going on these sort of supporting cast member roles of the endocrine system. And then if, I, if I've really gone off, which I don't do because for me I'm so hormonally sensitive, I really cannot, I'll notice that I feel a little bit crankier or more tired, um, you know, but I'm, I'm pretty committed to the program. I mean, it's why I'm able to still have a period and, and have a healthy cycle. The protocol works if you're on it 80% of the time. You don't have to be perfect, which is great news. That's how resilient your body is. But for someone like myself, I just know that I feel an extra 20% fan, more fantastic if I'm on protocol more exclusively. So there are things that are non-negotiable for me, like um, 
eating the right foods in the right phases of my cycle, uh, exercising the right way for the right phase of my cycle, getting the right sleep hygiene perfected, and taking the right supplements, and avoiding um, pro-inflammatory foods and endocrine disruptors. I mean, these are just things that I do that are I can't not do. I mean, and like if I'm traveling, I still do them. If we're, I bring stuff with me, um, it's, just, it's just part of the fabric of my day-to-day -day life, so it's not a big burden. Um, but I built up those practices um, over time so that I have mastery over them now. So wherever you are, if you're just getting started, don't worry about how many different things I'm doing that you might not be doing. Start with something. Start with something that resonates with you. Like if you think, you know what, gee, I really should swap out all the chemicals in my home, and that feels like a straightforward thing because it's one and done you know you throw out the bad stuff buy some new stuff and it's done start with that you know start where you can if it's switching to organic start there and you'll start to see that you're actually making improvements a little bit goes a long way so woman code is this book that i wrote and it was published in 2013 you know i wrote it because it it was the it was the conversation i had been having in my professional career with my clients for over a decade and I thought, you know, this is the protocol. I want women to know about it. I want them to understand, you know, about endocrine disruptors. I want them to understand that once you have a diagnosis, it doesn't mean you're stuck with it for life. And I wanted them to understand how their hormones worked, what they are, the symphony of how they work together, how things can throw them off. I wanted it to be a very practical, tactical book about what how your body works and what to do. It's the sex ed you never got but really should have gotten um, about being female and having a female biochemical operating system and how you interact with that to optimize its function. In chapter five of that book is this magical chart. And I created this concept called cycle syncing um, now almost 20 years ago where I was in the course of my research just sort of piecing together that for each of the different, the four different hormonal ratios you have, that one per phase of the cycle, there are four phases of the cycle, you need to actually be eating specific foods to both offset and support um, the metabolism and production of different hormones in that phase. And then also exercising the right phase not to um, further deplete your hormonal balance. And, and, and then of course, if you are balanced, you get to take advantage of this, the, the beneficial effects on your brain chemistry for heightened productivity and creativity. If you read on the Amazon page, all the women who've you know, have gotten pregnant and gotten their cycles back, and you know, I had a woman on a, uh, a recent Facebook Live, and it made me cry, even though I hear this all the time, it just still, it still moves me. It's still, uh, this is why I do it because I know what it feels like. Um, you know, she, had, she just said, I just wanted you to know, 15 years I, she had been struggling with endometriosis, she said, and three months on the protocol, went in, did all the testing, and has been cleared, it's gone. This is what is possible for women. So I, I expected all of that, because I had been using this protocol in my practice, in my center in New York for you know, 12 or 13 years at that point. The thing that was really surprising was the response to this chart in chapter five. You know, can you turn this into something that I can use every day? I want to be, I can't remember all the details of the things I should be doing in each phase, the foods I should be eating in this each phase. And so, you know, my relationship with my community is very dynamic and, and when they want something is when I make something, you know, so they really wanted this to be an app. And so it took me a couple of years to do it. And at the same time as I was having my daughter, um, but we launched it just at the beginning of 2017, and the response to that has been remarkable. So the, the MyFlow app, it, yes, it does, you know, tracks your period, and it's the first functional medicine period tracker where you learn why you're having a symptom and what to do about it with food and supplements. I mean, that alone is fantastic. It will tell you where you are in your cycle, what activities to select that are ideal for that phase, how to eat, how to exercise, all those things. And then you just tap what you want, select and schedule it into your own calendar. It's really about liberating ourselves from the oppressive construct that we somehow have to fit our personhood into a 24 hour male circadian paradigm that really optimizes for their hormonal patterns. But we have both the 24 hour circadian pattern and a 28 day hormonal pattern that happen concurrently and we have to actually work with that to feel good and to be our most productive and creative selves. When you try to squeeze yourself into that 24 hour matrix only, you not only feel very um, frustrated and you don't feel like you're being your most productive self, 
but also you start to develop that sort of inner critical voice, like the volume of that gets really loud, like, oh, gee, why can't I do the same thing every day that I said I was going to do? Why do I feel like last week I was in that boot camp class and I was the star student and this week I wish I could melt out the back door? Something's wrong with me. Trying to even just fit into a male system is flawed thinking and makes us feel symptomatic. Um, doesn't help with PMS or any other period stuff. It also makes us feel really negatively about who we are and how we're working in the world, when, which just need not be, because the truth of the matter is you happen to be encoded, and that's why I called the book Woman Code. You are encoded with the, um, the same cyclical creation energy that you see in the seasons and nature and how a seed germinates, you know, in different stages, you know, from planting to, to vegetable, you know, that whole thing, it's, it's imbued in your um, unique female biochemistry and understanding how to harness that is pretty powerful stuff. So that's what's been super exciting about the response to Woman Code is not only do women feel like they finally have the, as they call it, the little purple period Bible, you know, that if anything is going on with their hormones they can really troubleshoot from the book, but they're given a whole new perspective and it feels like a reclamation for them uh, and for all of us to say, you know, we don't, we don't need to be like men, we need to be like women, and that's a much better deal.